Welcome back to Caffeine Confessionals. We are here to talk about the challenge spies, allies, and allies, specifically the female cast. We are going to be doing a breakdown, talking all the specifics on all the rookies you want to know about, on all the veterans who are coming back. And we're going to do it in a power ranking format, going from the strongest players to the weakest. We did a male breakdown. Go watch that video. I am Alan Aguirre, and I am joined by my lovely co-host. We have Mr. Luke Muncy. What's up, guys? And the lovely Miss Nikki Sin. Hello, hello, hello. And we are really excited to talk about the female cast this season because they brought in a really impressive group of rookies on top of some fan favorite veterans and some good returns. Yeah, like I, when the cast first came out, I'm not like super stoked about all the vets coming back, but I get how it plays into this like new trilogy thing that MTV is doing. Um, I'm most excited about the the newish, I guess, vet that they brought back, Amanda, but we'll get to her. Oh, I'm so excited to see Amanda bring the drama, and as we saw in, like, the trailers, hookups. Um, it's, this cast, like, female-wise, it's pretty stacked. It's, like, new rookies, uh, like, really, really fun and good competitive vets, and Anissa. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be a great showing. From a competition standpoint, I do think this cast is a bit of a, Step down from the previous three, four seasons where they had a lot of really athletic women. But this is more of a challenge type cast where you just have these impressive and charismatic individuals. And that's what the challenge has kind of been missing in the last few seasons. And I'm just really stoked for some of these rookies. Like I did, I, I feel like I'm the, the expert on these like female rookies, especially because I watched the clips of them in their foreign shows and languages I don't know and was just translating and. I, I'm excited for these people in ways that, like, I, I just can't wait for, like, casual fans to see. Yeah, that's exciting. I think on paper, you look at this cast, and you're like, oh, shoot. But Alan's exactly right. This is what we need. We need a cast that's maybe not the strongest, hulkiest girls, but they're just, like, entertaining, and they can carry a ball. They can run down a hall and knock the crap out of somebody. So I think it'll be great. Yeah, they needed more TV personalities than they did athletes. And I, I think that's been you know, very apparent, even just like Lolo Jones in general. They need people with like personalities. They need people that are relatable, but also people that are entertaining. And I think that this cast, this cast is going to bring that. So let's just jump into the cast itself. The way I do it is I give each cast member a score out of 100 points, almost like they are a video game character in a sports game or you know, kind of like a grade in school. Um, the number one person on my ranking does not have the highest overall score, but I do think she has the best chance to win the game. With an 88 out of 100, we have Ashley Millionaire Mitchell, two-time challenge champion, three-time finalist. Uh, she has many stats that are very impressive Whether when it comes to daily challenges, when it comes to just winning and making it to finals. Uh, she's been an early exit in three out of her last four seasons, maybe even four out of five if you count the double elimination loss on uh, double agents but if she gets to a final Ashley is dangerous yeah I obviously Ashley's my number one forever always whatever the last few seasons he's been a huge target obviously she's a huge threat makes sense she's got one of those missing pieces she's used in previous seasons and that's Amanda and Amanda is somebody who shockingly if you would have told me this years ago I wouldn't have believed you but shockingly looking like she's got some allies in the game that Ashley can tail end off of, that can help keep her safe. And if Ashley makes it to the end of this game, I don't see how she can't win, because if any of the previous seasons we've watched recently have showed us anything, to win a final, you've got to be a good runner. Uh, you probably have to be good at some puzzle of some sort, which she's good at both of those. And I just think this is Ashley's game to win. Yeah, I think that her her puzzle strength is obviously one of one of the bigger ones for her. I think socially she does better uh, when when she's sort of sort of making friends and alliances rather than the hookups, but those are the most dramatic and I love them. The Kyle hookup. Won't get over how great that was. Um, yeah, and like even if you remember War of the Worlds 2, she got lost in that elimination against Nani and then got there like felt like 10 minutes after Nani got to the puzzle, it just was done. And it, was, it was so fast. I think this really could be her game to win. This could be her, like, comeback season. 
Uh, yeah, I agree with that. And I agree with what Luke said about Amanda being there for Ashley. And the thing about Ashley is that she is a likable human being, but people do not trust her. Amanda, well, not everyone likes her. They know she is fiercely loyal. And the way she is loyal to Ashley and the way she is loyal to her other allies is that she looks out for them. And she is almost someone where Ashley becomes more trusted because she has Amanda by her side. And when you have that support system in the game, it means so much, especially to someone like Ashley. Uh, as we saw in the Double Agents mini final last season when Ashley came back with Corey, had they not gotten lost, they would have won that daily challenge. And who knows how far they go into the season together because Ashley still proved that in a final, you don't want to run against her. Uh, that is a big if, though, because she's obviously proven to be beatable in eliminations. Her frame doesn't really suit headbangers. But she has some fight in her. She's had some good wins in the past, especially on the Champ vs. Pro series. Uh, Ashley's just a great cast member to have, too, just from an entertainment standpoint and based on the trailer. Hookups. She's looking hot in the pool, man. We got some bikini shots. Uh, thank God for a warm mother season. Wait, Luke and I have been begging for it. We're like, please. Yeah, and Ashley featured promo bathing suits, bikinis, hookups. She is like the total package and what you want in a female challenger. So, I mean, I didn't do the numbers Alan did. Throw those to the side. She's she's number one regardless, in my humble opinion, of course. Going to be exciting to see her again this season and finally get to actually, like, play the game for the first time. Because even though she made the final on War of the Worlds 2, she kind of just floated, whereas I feel like we're going to see an active Ashley again, and that'll be a mess in a good way. Second place... Uh, the person with the highest overall score, I gave them a 91 out of 100. It is Casey Clark, uh, two-time finalist in two seasons, 2-0 two and o day, uh, elimination record, both dominant wins over good competitors in Kayla and Teresa. Uh, she has the highest daily challenge win ratio percentage of any competitor all time, not female or male, all time. Number one right now. Uh she, last season on Double Agents, in my opinion, had the best political game out of anyone. She was on the right side of every vote, something that not even Cam and Leroy did that resulted in that blindside Ashley Cam elimination. Uh, and now she doesn't even have to get a skull anymore. Casey's just good. <laughs> yeah, the thing with Casey, she is not entertaining. I'm not, you know, not ruining the show for anybody. She's not entertaining. Don't expect huge levels of drama, although she's featured in the promo. But people trust her. People like her. She's not going to step on anybody's toes, even if she is on the right side of every single vote and she's getting rid of people. Uh, but she is a huge threat. I mean, I know she's only been in two eliminations, but like Alan said, against two pretty recognizable girls within the franchise, and her daily ratio is insane. Her and Leroy were killing it last season. And it's hard to say. I mean, Amber B and CT had a pretty dominating final last season, but if her and Fessy hadn't... Well, if her knee hadn't blown out and he hadn't quit because Fessy's a quitter, it's hard to tell what could have happened because she's such a strong female. Like, she's definitely given Ashley and these other girls heavy, heavy competition. I definitely think it's it might be a case. I definitely might think it might be a case of maybe she's just not interesting on TV. Because, again, it seems like she gets along with tons of cast members. She's a very social person. She might might just be sort of, well she is like everyone calls her the ikea furniture because they think that she's really boring but competitively it's insane she's so good it's like impressive to watch her and also surprising because you like forget that she's there <laughs> you're like oh yeah i forgot she was competing and also i've always liked because i've only ever seen her um on these like last few seasons i like the way that she works in teams and then I think she does a really good job of working as an individual. And I think she gets that from Big Brother. Plus, she's going to have that Big Brother alliance. Now they got Big Brother, like, international Big Brother people, too. They could, they, they could expand. In all honesty, I think she doesn't need anyone. Like, she doesn't even, like, she's that good physically. And then, like, she just carries the circus for no reason. And you got, you got the clowns like Fessy and Josh. It's a literal circus, bro. Like, I don't... <laughs> the, the goof troop if you will she, she's got all these clowns and it's just like detach yourself just hang out with nani you know it i mean she's also smooth as hell because you know there's this there's the trailer scene where they you know they share their for the kiss and then she immediately goes for the neck 
And I'm like, that was smooth. No, no guy on the challenge does that. Casey is just on another level. She'd uh, get me right away. She'd get my number in a bar immediately. Yeah, Casey, one of the best reality TV competitors of all time. But again, we wish there was more entertainment-wise. Uh, next up in third place, we got a rookie. I gave them an 85 out of 100. It is Michaela Bradshaw from Survivor Millennials versus Gen X and Survivor Game Changers. I always call it Second Chances because it basically is. But yeah, uh, if you're unaware of who Michaela is, she is five foot eight. She ran track and field in college. She graduated from high school with a 4.83 GPA. She worked as a college admissions counselor. Then she got her master's degree recently and is pretty big in the business world. She is intelligent. She is athletic. She has the good size, the muscle tone. And if you watch her on Survivor, is willing to get dirty if she needs to be. She has all the skills made for the challenge. And yeah, I'm excited for her. I love Michaela Bradshaw. I talked with people beforehand. I think Al might have been one of them. Like, you know, it's been years since Michaela's Survivor debut and even her second season. Is she still going to be maybe this like dramatic, like over the top person? But I, in the trailers that we've seen or like the promo that we've seen of Michaela, she's still just as funny, just as like into the game, thinking about these different things. I love her. She's a she's super athletic, super smart, super calculated. The only thing I hate about Michaela on the season is they miss a huge opportunity by not having Jay on the season. But I like in a way that she can define herself without him there. And she can step out and be like, this is me. This is who the fans of, you know, both shows have been wanting. Because I've wanted her for years as a, a lot of people I know. Yeah, I 100% agree with the f- this is something that the fans really wanted. Like fans of Survivor and fans of the challenge. This is, they finally listened to us for once. Um, I think that Michaela is going to succeed in doing what Natalie Anderson could have done last season through no fault of her own. Um, she had the the medical the medical reason to leave, but I think that she could like take a spot, take the spot as like like top female like survivor competitor, top top male too. Because like, what was Jay doing? <laughs> yeah, and and not even to harp on Natalie per se, but Natalie is someone who on her original Survivor season. Uh, wasn't super, I mean, she was athletic, but she got super fit her second season. And she, she she's fit, where Michaela is just a natural-born athlete who ran in high school and college and was, like, at a high level. And that natural athleticism is something that just separates female competitors. Uh, that's why Laurel is so good. It's not, because Laurel doesn't even train for the challenge. She's just naturally, like, good at stuff. Uh, like Teresa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Michaela's bluntness is her one weakness in that she will tell you if she doesn't like you. And I appreciate that as reality tam- TV fans, like that endears her to me incredibly. She is introverted and charismatic at the same time. It makes for good TV, but it could get her into trouble. Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Any more words on Michaela before we jump into number four? The only thing I'll say, and I said it on the mail breakdown the other day too, I think in regards to Tommy, um, the winner of season 39, Corey Wharton said on the last reunion that he is targeting survivor people on this upcoming season off the bat. And I'm praying, he said this to Jay, of course, Jay's not on this season, but I'm praying that promise does not hold true because there's a lot of survivor people that I do not want to see go. Well, maybe not a lot, but any of them. I like the integration. We've got so much big brother, bring in some survivor people that like I love too, but yeah. That's all you just, you just want Tommy gone. I also want to note that um, on Instagram, you could see that, you know, Michaela and Michelle were hanging out with, with a bunch of the cast in New York. I mean, they were filming something, but it was nice to see them, like, hanging out and getting along. So I feel like Michaela could have a really good social game. I hope so. Love the woman. I, I was about to say the word commingling, and then I was just like, that's such a dumb word. <laughs> It's like, silly, I like it. No, yeah, my brain just came up with that word. It's like, yeah, they're coming. I was like, no, that's what it's like. So, uh, next up, uh, so, but compared to how I rated her two seasons ago, or even last season, it's been a big drop off at an 84 out of 100. It is Miss Tori Deal. And if you check my blog, I'll have an interview dropping with her this weekend. Uh, <laughs> Tori's coming off to bad elimination losses early into seasons 
one against the competitor she thought was throwing the elimination, the other against Anissa where she couldn't even uh, pull over a cart of balls or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, Tori, World of Worlds 2, highest of highest. Right now, going into the season on the lowest of lows, and I think people will ask, like, is Tori good at the challenge? And the answer is really simple. Yeah, she is. She's an athlete. She has a good build. She has good cardio. Her biggest enemy is herself and her ego at times. Yeah, I, Tori is somebody that I think it's easy to hate because, like, it's everywhere. People will love to hate on Tori. She's this, that, the other. She's calculated in ways that, you know, there are some calculated people on the show we love, but we don't really love when she does it. But I, she's the one person that I'll honestly say I don't love, but I'll root for. And that's a strange phenomenon that happens in my head because for the most part, she's not my favorite. But like Alan said, World of Worlds 2, I still to this day, I'm like, she should have won that season. Like they kind of had a really weird purge in the end of the season. She she played a phenomenal game with Jordan at the time. Um, and even on her own without him, I don't want to like credit just him for that. So I'm, I'm excited to see her this season single. Um, not attached to anybody. She can hook up if she wants to without it being this weird like, oh, is she engaged? Is she not engaged? Does she have a boyfriend from Mario the one at home? And that's no hate to her. She can do whatever she wants. But that'll be fun to see. I just hope that she can work on being more genuine because I think she's always in game mode, which, I mean, it is a game. But if you can't separate that, even in the house, you just look like you're paranoid. And I really wish she would find a new ally. Um, I'm not going to hate on Anissa a bunch, but like Anissa is not somebody that at this point in the show is pulling in all these numbers and has this great athleticism. Like Tori, shift to some of these newer girls that might have more longevity on the show that can be your numbers. And hopefully she does it this season. Yeah, I mean, Big T wasn't a, like a well-known vet really last season, but she got all the rookie girls on her side pretty quick. And that was that was a smart move for her. I... Well, I feel like I, I probably couldn't, like, sit down and have brunch with Tori. Um, I, I feel just, like I, I could, totally. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know if we have personalities that'll, that'll commingle yeah. uh, very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I do think that she, she is meant for this show. I think her last couple seasons where she, like, had those... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say pathetic because um, I don't have a chance to compete in them now, so no one can call me out on it. Um, her pathetic eliminations. I think she was way too in her head. It's just like a lot of people that uh, will go on like Big Brother, or, like, I don't know, even the real world, which wasn't a competitive show when they have so much stuff going on at home. So she was just I feel like she was so focused on whatever was going on back at home or trying to forget that and was so in her head and was just like only game, only game must make drama must make good tv and you're like no just just and i want to do the in. challenge yeah i want to chime in there too because i think we're on the same exact page she tried too hard for too many seasons to be the face of the show and i think by doing that she sabotages herself like what will be good television for the people which we love good television but that's not her thing like she she really is a face of the show let's just be honest she's very recognizable but she just needs to go and compete that's what people like about her it's not that she's like charming it's not that she's you know anything really except for she's a good athlete who can be kind and fun and like have a good time she needs to focus on that but like i said without a guy there maybe entering the house with she can just kind of lay low have a good season maybe redeem some of those previous elimination losses and I can say when interviewing her, she sounded like very self-aware of her faults of the past couple seasons. Um, I, I do think one of her problems is the same that her best friend Anissa has, and that they try to be friends with everyone. And when you try to be friends with everyone at the end of the game, people can only look out for their number one ally or themselves. And then that just leaves you like hung out to dry. I mean, like you can be friends with people on these competitive shows, but in the end, like they're not making the money for you unless your your partners are like on a team you know what i mean like on big brother when people are like oh i don't want to like hurt someone's feelings and like nominate them like that's you're competing for money yeah that's the game that's why i always like when uh someone like wes or even the lavender ladies they create an enemy because sometimes just having that dividing line to appeal to other people it's like hey look i have this enemy i will thus not be targeting you because i have these other people i'm battling against so don't go after me either. And 
it just clears things up to people. Having a good enemy sometimes matters. If you're someone like Case who can just coast, then that's fine. But for other people, you need you need a foe. Uh, and that transitions us into our next person. And we have in fifth place. Uh, this might be too high of a rating. Maybe I'm too low. It is Amanda Garcia with an 82 out of 100 returning for the first time since having a kid. And Amanda is a very divisive figure when talking about her as a competitor. Some people look at her elimination record and like, oh, she's not good at all. But if you look at her daily challenge stats, she's seventh all time among female competitors. Really good in puzzles. Has the skill set where if she gets to a final, she could win one. And even Ashley has said, like, oh, yeah, Ash Amanda would have beat me in the invasion final if, we, if, we, if she had gone there. Yeah. I don't know if she deserves this ranking. I don't know. I can't do the math. You do the math. But you're exactly right. It, the first thing people are going to comment, so we're waiting for it. Look at her elimination record. We'll go back and look at her eliminations. They're all a little bit fishy. So let's let's just look at that first. Amanda is smart. And what I think helps elevate her to this fifth spot, she's had this child. Her brain's on straight. She's she's focused and she's in the game this season. She said this on the live thing that challenged you last week. Like, I've got, a, I've got a child to worry about. This isn't just like, oh, I can go crazy, hook up, have fun, which I'm sure she will. But when she lays her head down at night, she's not thinking about her hookup or how drunk she got. She's thinking, oh, I've got a son. That is going to totally channel her. And in seasons previous where she has kind of been like the side piece to Ashley, like, oh, we'll get rid of Amanda first. I think the roles have switched. Ashley will be Amanda's side piece. Ashley has, the, or Amanda has these numbers. She has Josh. She was partnered with on World of Worlds. By association, that gives her all of the big brother, or so one would think, and then whoever they're mixed with. She's there with Devin and Nelson from her original season of Are the One. They're not going to backstab her. They've said in previous seasons, like, I just can't do that to you. Amanda's coming in with this huge group of people and a better mindset. And like Alan said, all of those assets that one needs for a final that we've just not seen her use yet. So I'm hoping and praying that she can get to a final this season and we can see just how she does. I 100% agree that it's the, her, her son is now her motivation and she now has, you know, just, just a focus, something better to focus on than, and I don't want to compare her to Tori, but I am going to because I feel like her her start on reality TV was to start drama because, you know, she she started on Are You the One? And I've never been on the show, but I can assume that producers intervened enough that they were like, nope, you want to make good TV. And so and her her slight confusion uh, with the chips in her bed on one season where she was real mad about all the pranks. I think. Yeah, I think now she's got more of a, a focus on what she's. Sh- like should be doing she's like okay i gotta you know create alliances like create connections with people i have gonna, to play the game yeah i'm gonna jump it again if you have ever watched your either one season uh, uh drama like just drama when she was brought in as a replacement on rivals um three i guess three. it was best yeah fuck with it. nelson awesome. she like she came in just the producer said hey listen these other are the one people left like you got to give a good name for yourself like make a name she comes in Guns blazing. Camilla, screw you. Laurel, screw you. I'm going to be enemy to everybody. Or maybe Laurel wasn't there. Sorry. Well, she, that was invasion. But yeah. regardless, regardless, like she has always been that hothead and that's how they promote her. Uh, and, you know, they've actually promoted her like that too, where she's like, I'm here to like fight people and whatever. But it's going to be different. I just know it. Of course, I've not seen anything. I just feel it. Yeah. Uh, I, I always compare Amanda somewhat to Katie Doyle. As like the modern day version of like this person and you don't want to get into like verbal altercation she's going at you she's going for your throat she's going to be honest with you oh so still to look at i mean just just a good all-around reality tv competitor and man on rivals three that was just an ultimate like heat check moment of like i'm getting cast on the next season no matter what like i'm i'm starting fires everywhere uh amanda yeah. is a, amanda's awesome and yeah, I mean, if we get Final Reckoning Amanda, which she was training for the show at that point in time, uh, her and Zach were a million times better than Hunter and Ashley, the team that actually won the season. Like, it's not even close. Like, we're, we're talking about, like, I don't I don't even, I don't even know the competition. We're talking about RC Cola versus, like, the best Coke, like, like Coca-Cola with, like, gold flakes in it. I don't know what <laughs> we're even talking about, but, like, as competitors, that was a difference. So if we get that version, she is a threat to win the game. But I could also see her going out really early because she's small and uh, 
I'm going to say I would get brunch with her. Oh, God. I'd get brunch with her. Bottomless mimosas. Into, you know, the club that night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Next up in sixth place, we have with an 81 out of 100. We actually have three women with an 81 out of 100. But in sixth place, we have Nani Gonzalez, who is back for her 11th season, 10th season. Uh, just made her second final last year, won her first elimination in five years. And I thought last season was one of Nani's worst performances ever. But she made the final and won an elimination. Uh, it's funny because that's how Challenge Karma works. She has all these good seasons where she just comes up short. And then in one of her like most boring seasons, she just makes the final. Uh, we talked about her and Casey already. Uh, I always like seeing Nani. Yeah, Nani's fine with me. I, I love her as a human. I just think she's so good. In some ways, I'm, I'm like, what are you bringing to the show now? But she also, like I said about Amanda, Nani, we just know, makes those good actual real relationships that persist over time, whether they're rookies, whether they're anything. I mean, the rookies that comment on her poster, they're like, my angel, my this, my that. She's probably going to coast through another season. We'll have that extra layer of like, oh, she's with, Casey now so that'll be fun to see um but I don't know like I just like Alan said last season was really disappointing for her and her final run really wasn't that great either and I love her so don't hate on me but I hope she's been doing some training of some sort and that she does in the house as well uh because I just can't see her winning this season and that sounds like a hater but that's just me being a naughty fan who's realistic yeah, I'll definitely open any conversation up with, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Nani Gonzalez? But I don't know if she's, she's like champ ready still. And I hate saying that because I guess I'm just basing everything on when they're not at a brunch with them. But yeah. I'd ever, I'd yeah. ever, I would have every meal with her. <laughs> um, I think, didn't she come in last season with a boyfriend? Wasn't she still dating that like? Yes. Yeah. And no, she... no face white guy. <laughs> Maybe that's why she was just like a little off. She was a little boring. Maybe the cup, the cup noodles will come back this season. Her hot hat. season cup noodles. I don't know if that mixes oh. though. Ooh, maybe get some cold noodles. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> no, um, my thing with Nani is I do think she could win a final. I think her performance on Double Agents was really solid consistently of like someone who obviously isn't going to die in a final, but you're not going to beat the better competitors. And when you're dating Casey, unless you're willing to backstab Casey, which I don't think Nani's going to do, because that would be a vicious change in character out of nowhere after establishing yourself for a decade. Uh, yeah, she's just not going to win because of that. I mean, in the trailer, you could see her talking about like, yeah, let's get all the vets together. And I'm like, Nani, you want to keep the vets who've been beating you for years together? Like, no, you got to switch things up. You got to you got to align with these rookies who don't know what a final is like. And then what's funny is that in the trailer, you can see Ashley smiling as she says that. And I'm like, Ashley's like, yeah, I, I, I want to be with these vets who I've beaten in finals. And it's just that's a difference in what a winner is on the challenge and what Nani is, sadly. And I, and I love Nani, but like it just, you know, it, it, in my in my uh, graphic of her, I put like one of the best friends you could have in life. Terrible judgment in people in friends. Yeah. <laughs> And my last takeaway on Nani is I feel like ever since she's been back, I mean, maybe World of the Worlds, she was like, I can win. And if they hadn't done that crazy, like, individual thing, she probably could have. But I think since Nani's been back, since her, like, mini retirement slash break, she's more so like, this is a business opportunity. I'm getting paid weekly for this, plus a select amount of money for even coming on. So making the final last season and not winning, she's still got a pretty hefty check for doing the show. So, like... I can't blame her. You know, I wouldn't be going in the house hot like, let me get rid of Tori and Ashley because one of them is going to come back and one's going to be like, oh, no, now you're going in. So I don't know. I, I think she plays that smart and she's accepted that I might not win, but I can definitely collect some money for when this doesn't matter to me anymore. Yeah, I think she's doing a similar thing to Anissa where it's like you're showing up for work. You're just not employee of the month. Show <laughs> up, get that check, you know. Complete all your duties, whatever your checklist. Big, big difference, though. One's a fan favorite. The other is uh, on the show. Uh, <laughs> We're not uh, going to say who. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, next up, at an 81 out of 100, we have another rookie. 
um, from Survivor Turkey, multiple seasons, including the All-Star season, and Turkey's Got Talent. We have Bruna Kembeldek. Uh, she is, she went to college for ballet and acrobatics, which is insane. I've watched videos of her, and what's amazing about someone like Berna is that she is essentially like a trained professional athlete, but not good enough to be famous. So, like, what do you do when you're not good enough to be the best dancer in Turkey? You go on MTV as a challenge and you kill it because you're more athletic than everyone. You have excellent hand-eye coordination. You could lift your body weight up pretty easily because you've been doing it from great heights your entire life. Uh, and she is a kind of a cracked individual. I mean, she is. She wants to be famous so badly, but not in a not in a terrible way. But like that, like she's gonna be erratic on this show. Uh, she's also it's important. She's from Survivor Turkey, but she lived in Germany, so she's European. It's a it's a very fascinating mix. I'm excited for her. I, I already get the feeling that I'm not gonna like her, but I feel like I'm gonna love her because she's entertaining. All of the athletic background, super impressive. Like that's scary to me. You can just even look at her and you're like, she's going to be good at this show. Uh, we also can't forget, like, she was on Survivor Turkey with Turbo. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen yeah. clips of them interacting. Uh, he's a level of craft as well that uh, I think she could bring to the show as, like, herself. I, I'm i excited to see her. I've already seen, like, the promo clips, so I'm not spoiling anything where Amanda's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to like her. And I'm like, huh. What we've been missing the past few seasons, and Alan referenced it with someone else earlier about like having a foe. It is so fun to see like two people just not like each other, and it to be like fresh and new, not like a seventeen season storyline, but like oh shoot, here's this vet that we know who really does have this really deep seated like or I guess newfound hate for this person, and let's see how this plays out. So I think that's going to be really exciting, and she wants to be famous. She's going to put on a show. Yeah, I think the the wanting to be famous thing does sort of stem from from living in Europe because there is such a culture around there of, you know, becoming reality TV famous. Again, I'm not just saying this to bring up Jordy Shore, but like people on Jordy Shore and like the only way is Essex, like they're they're huge stars there. They're like they're massive. And I think that's sort of something maybe she's trying to accomplish. I think that as with the background as a dancer, it's that's going to be incredibly helpful for her. We spoke about um, like similar qualities in in playing soccer and skateboarding with Logan. Um, I think that drama wise, fantastic. It kind of seems like the challenge is really trying to push her. At least their social media is. They like posted a picture of her, which I was a little confused by because um, they didn't really feel like they were they were pushing her too much in trailers. But I, I think she's going to bring the drama and that. That might make that it's either going to hurt or help her game. Physically, no. we'll see how she can compete in in challenge like dailies. Because I remember we compared um, Natalie versus uh, Nani on top of that truck with that wrestling thing. We're like the reason that Nani was doing better is because she's used to doing things like this rather than just having the, like physical strength. And uh, with Turbo, I mean, we saw like the challenges on Survivor are very intense, Survivor Turkey specifically. She did three seasons on that show. Uh, she is not like a rookie when it comes to this stuff. I think she'll transition very easily. And again, it's not like, you know, there are dancers on this show. She was trained. She went to college, like, you know, institutions for acrobatics and ballet. She's not, you know, she's not a schmuck. She's, she's legitimately like at a high level as like, you know, just a half, like a half step below people who are probably like the most famous at their craft and yeah she'll make for some good tv because those people who are just they couldn't they couldn't quite achieve the level of like fame and skill at that certain craft but spend so many hours to it they are psychos they will channel into something else they are competitive and it's gonna be good tv <laughs> i'd like to make one quick note and this has to do with all the international cast members um i'm just I'm hoping and praying to whatever is holy that there's no like Dragon Ball editing for any oh, of them yeah. <laughs> this time. <laughs> that was that was rough. I hated that. I hated that so much. For Turbo, <laughs> at first I was like, okay, and then they did it with Nam, and I was like, okay, and I just feel like they're gonna do it to Logan or something, and I 
Ooh, I don't have it in me. No, no, they're gonna have because he's he's because he's a uh, Spanish. They're gonna throw up some flames. They're gonna throw up some like spicy. Yeah, that, that's what they're gonna do. I know. I, I'm Mexican. Yeah. I, I I know. I I know how they're gonna do my people. They might they might put a mariachi band. I I don't trust MTV. Well, uh, some Brero <laughs> they're gonna put on him, or I don't. I don't really know any other stereotypes. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I I I go wild for a sombrero every time. I pop for a sombrero. <laughs> if they put someone in a sombrero, uh, I love crazy big hats. Um, <laughs> they're they're hilarious. They make normal sized people look small. <laughs> uh, next up in number eight, it's someone who I am honestly like. I need to be frank. I'm enamored by this person. I have no reason to like. Like in the, I mean, there, I have reasons to why I'm projecting them so highly, but I saw one cast photo and was like, this person's gonna be awesome, and that is Priscilla Anyabu uh, from Love Island UK. I scored her an 81 out of 100. I saw her Love Island cast photo, and I just saw the way her arms are built, where they have that that that, that you know, they look like they can rip off a pickle jar really easily. Her stomach had a really good muscle tone. She's five foot seven. She has really good proportions. And just that like that look of someone who is an athlete, even if they've never spent time in their life as an athlete. And someone really similar to that is uh, Susie Meister, who never trained for the challenge and then went like never played sports growing up. And then went on to be one of the best players ever because she had that natural athletic build and muscles because it just sometimes you're born with it. And that's what I see in Priscilla. Yeah, I don't know much about her, but I remember when those cast photos came out, Alan was, you said, like, her arms look like she's built. Um, I don't love necessarily that we have so many rookies on these recent seasons, but the nice thing that I can draw from it is that we know nothing about her, really. She has a more accessible show. I'm not going to take the time to watch it, if I'm being honest, but she could come in and she could just be like this crazy, huge super threat that just dominates the whole season. We just don't know right now. And I said this on the mail breakdown. She's from the UK. You know, Kyle mentions every season, like, I want to draw on these UK people. He's a vet that's very well liked. If those UK international or rookies, I should say, come in and are like siding with Kyle, he could probably get them a little bit further than if they choose not to. So she has some really good cards in her deck. It's just how she decides to play them. Yeah, I'm sort of most excited about the fact that I know so little about her. And that somehow gives me a lot to be excited about. If, if that makes sense. Um, I do want to just go back for a sec. Alan, do you think that you, you tear a pickle jar's lid off? I thought you twisted it. Or... Just curious. That's how we do it in the U.S., by the way, Nikki. We okay. tear it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll just keep eating my KD. You guys eat your Kraft mac and cheese. Um, uh, no, but I'm, ex I'm excited to see uh, what kind of drama she brings and how she can compete, especially because there's so many rookies on this season. I hope she doesn't get like lost in the in the chaos of it all yeah some other important details is that she got an international business degree at 22 uh is currently the business development manager or like gm of a company called empower africa ltd uh she's very business focused as well obviously intelligent that's part of the reason why i also ranked her highly because like I, I look at her it's like well i know she's intelligent i know she's business focused and something that really really impressed me when going through uh all these profiles on her is that she is a former pageant queen and was very competitive in that field and I, like to me like pageants are almost more impressive than a sport because you have to make yourself perfect on pageant day you have to be ready for every question if you're ready for the talent portion the swimsuit portion you have to look on fleet your body has to be perfect on that day and there's so much specified focused that people don't think of it as a cutthroat competition when it's so competitive and you look at tori hall and Bailey Dayton, and they have that cutthroat nature where they grew up on that pageant circuit. And man, I to me, that's almost more impressive than like, you know, someone playing on their JV basketball team in high school. Like, oh, I played basketball, oh, I played soccer, you know? And it's just like, come on. Like that's, like she was successful in her field. Yeah, I see your vision with that. And I wasn't with you actually until you said Tori and uh, Bailey, and I'm like, wait. Those are two very cutthroat women who just are like, I'm here to do one thing, get out of my way. So yeah, I love it. I wish Bailey would come back. Me too. <laughs> Go for Scylla. Uh <laughs> Next up in uh, ninth place, we have two people at 77, but I'm putting this one above. Uh, from Survivor, 
winner of Survivor Ko Rong and third place finisher of Survivor Winners at War, we have Michelle Fitzgerald. She spent 78 days on Survivor and has never gotten voted out. The only player to ever do so while also winning a season. Uh, she She's just like a total package. She's intelligent. She's social, she's smart, decently good shape. Uh, what, what I find, I think, what people really love about Michelle is that she kind of checks every box without being, you know, without being hateable in a way. Like, she's very gorgeous without being a model. She's kind of nerdy without being a complete dork. She's charismatic without being, like, overly, you know, fake. She just checks every box, and I think fans are going to love her. I love her. <laughs> uh, you know, I was concerned that she might still be in a relationship whenever this was filmed because, you know, we had talked, the three of us, after filming podcasts about she was dating other Survivor players. I was like, well, that will be boring. But no, we already have the trailer out where she's making out with people. Like she said in her promo videos, like, are you single coming in? She's like, yes, I'm single and I'll hook up if I need to. She is so smart. She can hook up strategically, which I know that some people do already. It's, we have a term for it, politicking. But I think that she can do that exceptionally well if she chooses to. Uh, she's not like a layup athletically. Her just Well, uh, strength is going to be an issue for her. And there have been some survivor dailies, if we're going to keep it on track with, you know, the challenge talk, where she's struggled to keep up with like even like 40-year-old soccer moms who have not worked out in like 20 years. Um, but perhaps she's trained for this. And I don't know, the survivor situation is different because you don't know what's going on mentally, physically, things like that. I think the challenge, I'm going to say the challenge is her show. No, survivor's her show. The challenge could also be her show. She checks off a lot of boxes, just like Alan said. Win Shelf, it's legend. I one, I want her to win and do really well, just so like just so Jeff Probes has to like see that happen because I know he was not happy when she won, and that just makes me love her even more. There's also she she has the the ability, which I'm hoping will happen, and the opportunity. Like, again, I, I believe we spoke about it in the men's ranking to put together a survivor alliance like and again international survivors she could really do this and she's lucky that she's coming she's either lucky or unlucky that she's coming into a season with so many rookies but it seems like she's fitting in really well with the cast she's great tv because again like alan said it's she does all of this like effortlessly it's not like too in your face i don't i don't feels like she's like a forced character on me i feel like she's just herself and it works out great for reality tv so i'm really excited to see what she can do. Um, I'm a little nervous to see her uh, do anything like endurance or puzzle wise. I'm sure Jeff Probes will be at home like getting at her. <laughs> She's good at puzzles. I'll give her that. Yeah, very good uh, spatial recognition. Uh, I do want to say like I'm not a big fan of the Survivor Alliance for Michelle personally because I think out of anyone, if there's like a if there's a rookie on this season who knows how to socially like not have a target on her for either side it's michelle like on survivor there's a lot of like the cast skews older and nerdier and like just kind of just kind of funkier uh and she is you know her archetype is the people that are on the challenge she likes to party she likes to drink she likes to have fun and she was able to not get voted out on 78 days on that game while being able to relate and communicate with people outside of her realm now you put her in her realm and that's dangerous yeah and i want to add I said this on the Melcast breakdown as well. She's an American. I think that's going to have some weight for her. Like, give her some, like, clout with these people. Like, I'm from your same country. You've probably seen my show, which might help hurt. But the other thing is, too, she lives in Jersey. How many challengers are from Jersey, party in Jersey, hang out in Jersey? And it's usually the Jersey ones that are successful. I won't get into the names of those. But, like, she could totally, like Alan said, not play either side. Just play both. Like, hey, I'm a rookie like y'all, but also like, hey, I'm an American. Like, I know you guys, like, you know me. I'm excited for her. Absolutely. And I do think she does a good job of playing from the bottom specifically. Um, so I think when you have, like, a survivor alliance, that just puts a target on you as part of a number, whereas when you're just kind of coasting through, which, which she does really well at, she can navigate in different ways. Uh, next up, we have Esther Agumbiade with a 77 out of 100 she is from big brother niger nigeria uh the, one of the reasons i have esther ranked so highly is because 
I'm impressed by her education level. She went to university at 14. She joined the Nigerian Bar Association at 21. Uh, she's going to be a massive mental threat on the show. I mean, that is a fierce personality. And then you watch the trailers, and every single trailer, she's busting her ass in these daily challenges. She looks like she's really getting at it. And I'm I'm impressed. She's she's I mean, and Tom is just being gorgeous. I mean, I'm excited for Esther. Yeah, I did not know that she was that smart until recently. That's incredible. Um, so she's definitely got the brains about her. She's got an athletic build. And I don't know that much about her, which is the downside of having just so many international contestants. But what I will say is I did see her throw alcohol at another contestant in the trailer. Won't say who, but it made me very happy. Oh, oh, I saw. I am wondering if she's going to play down her intelligence. Um, sort of like you know she's from big brother and a lot of people do that on big brother like for example on like big brother 23 right now there's most people are just not saying what their jobs are there's lawyers saying there's bartenders uh there's you know forensic scientists saying that they do voices like voiceovers um so i'm i'm wondering if she'll play that down but i think she's going to be like a like a silent sniper and then just you know throw that trick and go off yeah, I think if anything on the challenge, you should be like, I'm a, I'm a molecular physicist or whatever, because people are intimidated by fear. Whereas like on Big Brother, you like people, you know, they'll vote you out. Whereas like, oh my God, he's like uh, Mike Ross on Rivals 1 when Wes goes like, hey, uh, we're not voting you and Leroy into elimination in case it's a puzzle to face us. And then Mike's like, yeah, I'm really good at puzzles. Like, you know, it's just like he did, he's never seen a puzzle in his life in an elimination. He's like, so, but he just runs with it because people are terrified of him because he looks like a dork. Uh, love him, but yeah, that's, you know, when people are afraid of you in any way, that is a big win. I think it's going to go over well for her. Next up in 11th, we have another 77. I have three 77s at 100. Uh, Emmy Alupe from Survivor Romania. She came in sixth place on her original show. Uh, Survivor Romania is vastly different from our version of Survivor. She was specifically on a version where they put famous people ish against like regular people. Um, she entered the, I think the season on like day 30 and then exited on like day 80. She's like, cause you can enter the game midway through or whatever. It's a weird game. Uh, she is a successful musician on YouTube. She has over 10, 15, 20 songs that have over a million views, including one that has like 60 million views. And while I'm not a fan of her music videos, those are numbers. We got a lot of fake rappers and musicians on the challenge. They ain't putting up those numbers, so Emmy's doing something right. Uh, she's only 22, uh, and she's kind of a mess. Uh, as a competitor, when watching clips of her on Survivor Turkey, she was pretty average and middling. But I do think she kind of has a good build for eliminations. She has the like the wide shoulders for a headbanger. Kind of reminds me body-wise of Sylvia. Um from, you know, Invasion Vendetta is Final Reckoning. Uh, and, yeah, she's she's erratic. She gets into a lot of fights. She, she was crying a lot in all the video highlights I saw. I'm, I am I have mixed feelings on her. I have feelings on her. <laughs> she is cracked. Absolutely cracked. But I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I love cracked. So I'm, I'm holding out my hope and love for her. But she just seems like maybe too cracked for, like, she might be a caricature without even knowing. And can I laugh at that? I probably will. Her body build, like, is impressive. When I was, like, hearing speculation, things like that, like, people like, oh, she's short, she's this, she's that, the other. No, she's tall. We saw the pictures of her standing next to people. She's super tall. Um, I know Nikki's expecting me to hate on her. I don't necessarily love her, but it's because I feel like she can be a threat to people that I do love. And because she just is, like, to the point of insane that I don't know if I can handle it. But props to her for actually having a successful music career, no matter, well, regardless. I'll stop. Nikki? I, I'm i already so excited for her. Um, I talked earlier about how I think that reality TV characters and like people that need to be on the show, stars of it, need to be likable and relatable. And not that I don't see billions of people that look like me on tv but specifically on the challenge haven't really got a lot of like alternative looking girls you know 
So I'm, I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see some of her fashion. She's got that blue hair. Very excited. She seems determined. You know, it's it seems like maybe maybe we we'd get into a fight after like, I don't know, half a shot of tequila for her <laughs> and a few for me. No, she, I, she'll get she'll get mad at how your tequila got poured instead of hers. Like, I don't like I don't like the way they poured yours instead of mine. You know, they give you a little bit more. That, that, that That's what I get from Emmy, bro. <laughs> it could also be because she's so young, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Which we need that. I won't hate on that. 22, I'm like, that's a good age. It's younger than me. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor Swift wrote a song about it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited to see any drama she brings. It seemed like, like Corey was talking in, in, in like interviews about how she's like a really good competitor or like that she performed well. And a lot of the cast seems to be like, you know, blowing up her Instagram. And she was obviously well liked. I, I'm, it might be an Emmy Stan account on my end. <laughs> I'm going to look something up real quick because my friend told me something kind of crazy the other day. I don't know if he was lying. I think he told me that Emmy only, like, Emmy only follows one person on, like, Instagram, and it was, like, Amanda. I no, that's, a, that, that's so. a lie. That's a lie. I think the only cast member she follows is Amanda. But that was just, like, my bad. Okay, she follows a lot of people, but I think Amanda's the only cast member she follows. They're all uh, Amanda. They're just <laughs> all of Amanda's accounts. Well, well no, because, like, uh, Bad Bunny, who, you know, has a lot more views on his music than Emmy, uh, the only account he follows is the WWE Instagram account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was like... We're in a royal I, I royal thought, <laughs> I thought it was a situation like that, maybe, and I, my bad. I led us astray, bamboozled, hoodwinked, smackledorfed, uh... <laughs> Next up, <laughs> with a 75 out of 100, and, like, this kind of seems like a low rating, but it, her rating has gone up a lot over the last few seasons for me. Uh, the fifth place finisher of last season, and that is Miss Big T, Tula Fasakerli. Uh, she has a great social game. People love her. I mean, she, I mean, she has some skills when it comes to swimming. Uh, she's willing to make big moves, good height, weight. Uh, high to weight strength ratio. Uh, again, though, a lot of it comes down to, like, we know she's not a threat in the final. We know that in a headbanger elimination, she's going to get taken out by almost anyone except for maybe, like, the people at the bottom of this list. Uh, but Big T is lovable. Good social game. Could sneak into the final very easily. I so agree. I love Big T, as does, like, pretty much everyone I know. And it's impressive to me to see someone have the trajectory that she had being the first female out on World of Worlds 2. Not very memorable, to be honest. I mean, she was putting up a fight, but like she was first boot. Kind of helped her out on Total Madness that she had to leave because of injury, not because she was eliminated. And then Double Agents was like her season. Like she's part of CT. That certainly helps. But like lovable, charming, just classy even. So this season should hopefully be like another season where we're ushered into just the era of Big T. She can play the vets. She can play the internationals. She can play CT because on the reunion, he apologized profusely and said, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. Um, the only thing is like, she can skate to a final, yes, but like, does she have the endurance? Is her stature going to limit her? Um, I hope not because I'd love to see someone like Big T win this show. Uh, I just don't know yet. I've not seen enough of Big T, and I've certainly not seen a final performance from her, but I, we might see. She gives me very much, like, old-school challenger vibes in terms of uh, what she what she brings to TV, what she brings to the show. I think I've seen a lot of her working out on, like, social media, so I think maybe last season uh, she may have felt, like, a little embarrassed or just, like, not as proud of herself as she wanted to be uh, as to how she performed physically. So she may have hit the gym. No, I... she's, she's been hitting the gym, like, every season since uh, War of the Worlds 2. But it just, like, there's, like, there's there's being in shape and there's having 10-mile endurance. And she did not have that on, you know, double agents. But, you know, it, it, it's, Mat it's Michelle Tanner syndrome. She has little legs. She can't go too far too fast. Uh, <laughs> Same. Uh, there's different ways to train for endurance. In high school, no. I just like smoked cigarettes and played soccer. So, <laughs> you know, you got to find balance. 
I'm really no, yeah. excited to see Big T back, though. I only know one person in my life that doesn't like her. Cam, I'm calling you out. Um, I'm, I'm ex- I want to see her like have a redemption arc against CD. <laughs> I do. I would love to see her be somehow be the mastermind that gets him out of the game. And she's like, you know what? I love you, but you doubted me last season. Like, you prove yourself now, which he probably would prove himself, let's be honest. But yeah, it'd be fun TV. When I talk about Big T, like, we, I mean, we talk about other people. It's like, what boxes do they check? It's like, oh, this person checks this, this, and this. And I don't think Big T ever checks any boxes other than being herself, which has carried her to being one of the biggest stars the challenge has ever had, like, like, in the modern era, like, in the mainstream. Like, I know so many casual fans who are just like, Oh, yeah, she's the best character on the show. Like, people love Big T. People, like, you don't even think about love Big T. And that, that that's good. That's awesome for her. She's probably going to be on the show. My parents love her. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it, she's the she's face a, of the Facebook page for the challenge right now. Who who, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Like, Look at uh, us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have also with a 75 out of 100. It is... Tacha Akide, who is one of the biggest star, the biggest star on the show in terms of like global reach. Uh, I mentioned, I think, uh, the other day that she had over a million followers on Twitter, uh, and some of her, and some of her fans were like, "Well, like she does a lot more. She's an activist. She's an entrepreneur. She's a model. She's the moment, and so on and so forth." Like, because she is all these things. But to me, her having over a million Twitter followers is big because. Look at how many followers CT, Bananas, and West have combined. It's less than a million. Tatcha has more than the three biggest male stars in this show's history combined. Like, those are the three biggest names this, this show's ever had. And, oh, like, competitors. Not kind of people like The Miz. But, you know, uh, that's, that's crazy. She is uh, from Big Brother Nigeria. Uh, on her season, she got nominated eight times for eviction and each time her fans came through and saved her in the fan vote. Uh, but on the challenge, you get thrown into elimination and it's 50 50. Yeah, I knew nothing about her until she was announced. And then my Twitter was just flooded with her fans. She has a huge outreach. Um, and Alan explained to us the other day that in her iteration of Big Brother, your, your, your housemates don't vote you out the public can save you or send you out. So it just shows that she's extremely likable, at least to the public. Um, I like that she's coming in with Esther, who I've read up. They've had like some tiffs before, but they're fine. So they'll have an ally on one another. Um, And I think it just shows that MTV really is doing their research on who to cast and who not to cast, maybe. I don't know, Um, because she has this huge fan base. I was reading an article today, and it was like over 100 countries that they're going to televise this upcoming season of The Challenge to, which is something they've not done ever before. It's been like two, three countries, and then people have had to illegally stream it. They're like putting it out globally. Um, so that'll just only broaden Tasha's impact. That's badass. Oh, the, the Titans are probably eating this up, and I love that. I It's really interesting because it, there hasn't been someone this big on the show before, like coming in with such a following. And, and having such a large fan base, obviously, for things other than social media and being on Big Brother. I'm I'm excited to see, you know, how she plays this game. There's a lot of her in, in the trailers, which is, that's great for a rookie. That means they're either really going to bring the drama or the drama's going to come right to them. What, so I, I what, I, yeah. what I find so fascinating is she's such a big star. And going into that, you wonder... Is that going to make her a target to get thrown in immediately? Because she... or I mean, I, I think potentially going into a future season, it will, like once people really know how big she is, like will people be trying to clout chase, try to become Tasha's best friend so that they can get endorsement deals? Is that a potential thing that could happen? Like, is she? <laughs> quick, quick answer: Yes. yes. Yeah, I can feel either way. I'm and I sliding think... in her DMs. <laughs> Did everyone here hear that car just zoom by in my house? Yeah, it was the it was the Titans. It was, I was gonna say it was the Titans just coming by to be like, "Yay, give their that, praise." That car had some powerful throttle, but not as powerful as Tatcha and her fans. And 
in the trailer, man, she's she's getting into it, man. She's she's cursing people out. She is like going at it in the daily challenges. Uh, had a really cool. Look. She's partying in a bikini. That's bad. Oh. She's she's a little shake, bro. The again, but it's like, why do I have a rank lower than these other people? It's because she is such a big presence that I can't imagine her skating by in the game. She's not a quiet impact. She can't coast through. Like I think Michelle Fitzgerald is gonna have fun, but she's gonna stick in the back. You know, mink, you know, commingle of people, and then Tasha is just a big. You know, she's gonna create a boom. She's gonna be. Like, you know, she's going to be front and center and people are going to target her for that reason. Uh, and I always try to be a bit more pessimistic with the rookies in general. That's why they, they rank lower than veterans, even though they have loads of potential because she looks like she's in great shape. She also got her degree at a young age. Uh, I believe at I think she went to college at 16, uh, got a degree in psychology uh, at 19. And she works as an activist. Uh, so Taj is awesome. I probably went to the psych ward at 16. What do you mean? Well, a degree in psychology, that's amazing. She can probably analyze these people and be like, here's what's wrong with you, and here's how I'm going to play that. So I'm excited for her as well. Yeah, I agree that the rookies are probably lower down because we haven't seen them compete on this specific show. Like, I I didn't think that, that Casey would do well. Because I was like, oh, I don't know if her, like, her big brother play will translate too well to the challenge but it did so so we'll see how uh how this how this queen does i'm not gonna lie i'm personally shocked he didn't think that, that casey would do well because she's just you know a female football player who's who's shredded i didn't watch her season <laughs> oh okay all right That's probably, okay. to be yeah. fair oh, okay. um i got all of this information from my big brother who loves the show and watches it oh, okay. he's like he's like the ikea furniture is gonna be on oh, it. Okay. Like, that's the, that was my source. <laughs> Next up in 14th place, uh, you know, pe- people have commented on uh, our page before, like, why are you guys so mean to this person? Why, why are you always gonna bully them? Why are you bully them? Uh, we got a Nisa uh, with a score of 75 out of 100. Uh, Anissa, I have to say this, like. She is not a complete layup competitor. She could, She's won daily challenges in the past couple seasons. She has won 10 career eliminations, the second most of any female ever. But she also hasn't made it to a final since 2009. Uh, I was like 12 back then, and now I'm the, like literally more than half my life uh, since Anissa has been to an elimination. Uh, <laughs> she also has the most elimination losses of any female ever with 11. Uh, she, in certain daily challenges, she's an auto DQ, and my biggest fault with her is her social game. It's just she tries to be friends with everyone, and then at the end she gets cut off and wonders, how did this happen to me? Why does this always happen? I have no, I have no explanation when the explanation's right there in front of her. Literally to a T. You know, like you said, lots of people last season were like, you guys are so mean to her. If she tried to play like listen, I'm this veteran that's been around forever. I'm not the same that I used to be, but like, I still have the heart for it. Like I still have the drive. I'm working against more odds now. Sure. But she's delusional. She's like, I don't get why I'm being targeted. I don't get why no one wants to be my partner. I don't get this and that and all these other things. Well, it's because things are different for you now. And I, and Anissa did do a podcast after last season and said the reason that she's put on more weight from her earlier seasons is because she got off certain medications. She's taking care of mental health. And those things are phenomenally important. But just the current state that Nisa's in, she cannot win the challenge. But like we said earlier with Nani, it's also not unwise of her to just show up. She's very recognizable. She's an OG person, whether you want to believe it or not, like she is. And, uh, you know, she can come collect that check, do the podcast, get invited to All Stars. I can't blame her. Uh, I just don't want to see her come on this season and be like, no one wants to work with me. Guys don't want to run with me. Like, there's just no awareness. I, I'll say this about her, that I think she sort of has this, this like, jaded vet mindset where she sort of feels like she's like, well, it's like CT. Like, of course people want to work with me. You know, I have all this, like, history on the show and, like, you know, I've been competing for so long. And I'm I'm not saying that her, her, and, her and Nani have a similar thing where they feel slightly entitled to just sort of, you know, get to the final. They're like, well, I haven't gotten to run a final. How come I don't get to win? No one's bringing me. 
well, put some effort in because the the reason we were so harsh on Anissa last season was there was a lot of times where she was just like, I'm not running. We're not going to win it anyway. Well, then why are you there? You know? Yeah. Uh, and she yeah she did make the final of challenge all stars and what frustrates me is she'll always just change the goal line she'll always like tell a story and then it's like well i really wanted this to happen it's like you know uh challenge all stars uh she comes in last place out of all the females he's like look i proved to everyone i can finish a final and it's like anisa we weren't doubting you could finish a final we were thinking that you would bring us down as a partner and come in last place which you did. You brought down people in that final, and that that's why people don't want to run with you. But I do think she holds an important place in this franchise uh, as a gatekeeper. In wrestling, they have these veterans who uh, their entire job is to put over younger talent. You know, beating them is a big milestone in their career to show that they are legitimate. And that's what Anissa is. Like, if you beat Anissa in an elimination, you show you're a good competitor, and that's happened for people... Uh, we have uh, Bailey on Total Madness, Big T last season, Kayla on Dirty 30, so on and so forth. Veronica proved she still had it by beating her on Dirty 30 as well. It's, you know, Anissa's place on this show is to be someone that people beat as almost like a almost like a gym badge in Pokemon. Oh. But I think you're correct in that when Anissa's, Anissa's first half, I guess, of her career as a challenger – no, she didn't have a great final performance, the one final she made, but she was elimination queen. Like people did not want to go against her in elimination because she was ruthless. She's cutthroat. Like she's good at this stuff. And while that has somewhat changed and in some ways it hasn't, uh, yeah, it's like collecting a little badge for your for your vest. Yeah, and I think that using the whole like Pokemon analogy, those gym leaders weren't just like they're just they didn't pick just like Joe Schmo from Pallet Town or Vermilion City, like they they earned it. And so You're I think that Anissa that. Yeah, Anissa has earned her her challenge gym gym member leadership. We, we can't take out of the equation that she provides good commentary and wonderful in the moment facial expressions that can carry a scene from like, oh this is uncomfortable to oh well, this is actually hilarious because she's thinking what we're thinking. Yeah, she's good Gen- TV. Gen Lee. Yes. The Jen Lee moment on Total Man on Total Man was elite. <laughs> Greetings, Earthly. Next up, uh, in fifteenth place is someone I am in love with now from watching her her shows. Uh, I've she has a low rating, sixty seven out of a hundred, but it is Bettina Buchanan from uh, Paradise Hotel Norway and Paradise Hotel Sweden, X on the Beach. Norway celebrity edition uh she is a she's only like 24 25 but she's a seasoned reality tv star and she is just like there to party and to hook up and (laughs) I shared on twitter one of my like favorite like I was watching a clip of her and she got drunk at night as people do uh she got horny as people do she decided well I'm having sex with someone tonight uh, so she walks into a room of guys half naked, uh, eating a, a slice of bread. I could not tell if it was to- if it was toasted or not. And she goes, "So who's going to be the sacrifice?" Uh, guy follows her to a bedroom. Lights turn dark under the sheets. Adult stuff is going on between the two of them, and she gets it done. And you know, her English might not be the best, but that language is universal across. Many cultures. Uh, this <laughs> and yeah. she has one of the worst laughs ever as well. It's important to note. Uh, but it's endearingly bad. <laughs> uh, and she, I, I love it. We needed someone on the challenge like this forever. Or like, she's going to make good reality TV. Yeah, I love a girl that can get the job done. Uh <laughs> <laughs> unintended i hope she's she's like she does not have the build to be like a strong runner she definitely does not want to be doing hall brawl and like hitting somebody head on like you know decipher how you will but holy cow please hook up please walk into a room with toast or just regular plain white bread and please hook up with somebody um 
I don't know if she's actually dating somebody though. I think she might be. So that could be a huge hindrance, but that's never stopped people before, to be honest. She's no, she's European. That doesn't, that they, yeah. she has to get the, she has to get that bread in both ways. Literally, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong and I don't want to overstep, but it, she is also the one that pulled an Ashley Mitchell. Am I correct, Alan? Yeah. On her fourth season of paradise hotel in Norway edition uh, on that show, you can like drop a ball and like they, they keep raising the money amount, but if you like drop a ball or something, you can take all the money for yourself. And she was like, Oh, I knew that he wouldn't drop the ball at this money amount. So I just took the money from him. And she, yeah, she pulled a millionaire Mitchell. I looked up the money amount and it was like 400, uh, Norsh. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I almost threw out a fake currency right there. Um, but, uh, it, it came out to like $35,000 us, which was less impressive. But was still awesome to see that she has that in her. Yeah, she stuck it to somebody. They did that on the U.S. version that lasted one season, and it was like, <gasps> but yeah, I love that about her. I, so I'm excited. But I mean, can she win a final? If I'm looking at her right now, um, no. But good for <laughs> no. her. You're showing up. Yeah. Uh, first of all, 35k U.S. is a lot <laughs> over here in Canada. What do you mean? I'm like, wow, that's impressive. Um, I. From what you're telling me, she's giving me uh, like Tabitha from Too Hot to Handle season two vibes, where it's just like she's just there to stir things up. I'm not oh, sure. Love, love that chick. <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, she'll she'll make it to a final, but I'm certain she'll finish. I'm here all night. I'm here all night, or at least till the show ends. Uh, but I do. I just want to see. I want. I want to see. Just like all these people, I want to see them bring the drama. It's a hot season. They got hot people. It's a hot location. I'm gonna keep saying hot until Alan interrupts yeah. me. Yeah. Please interrupt me. Yeah. <laughs> give me give me, I just want six episodes of Bettina. That's all I ask for. I'm not asking for to win anything. Just give me six episodes of her and I'll be happy. Cause she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna get it in. She's gonna get it in. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up in sixteenth place. Ooh, we got we got a Fugazi human. We got uh, Lauren Coogan from uh, Love Island, U.S. And I say, like, the only thing that's clear about Lauren is that we never know what's true. Uh, her age appears online, I think, as like 26, 27. She's actually 31. Um, she may not have a real accent. She's been in the U.S. slash U.K. Um, she may have called TMZ and other sites to give her like photos of herself for scoops and stories. Her other cast members are like, what is she saying from that season? Uh, and like, she, her main thing is that she's in like, she lasted five days on Love Island. She's an Instagram influencer, but her following isn't even that big. Uh, I, I, I look at someone like Tasha and Esther and Priscilla and Michelle and Michaela, and they're so impressive. And then I look at Lauren, and it's the opposite. My take on this is Lauren's from the most recent season of Love Island that has aired. I mean, there's one airing currently, um, but she's probably so cheap to get on the show. I mean, she was there for five days. She wants to be an influencer. She probably saw the appearance as more capital than whatever they offered her. Um, not to mention last night on an HBO show, uh, F Boy Island, which I could see people coming to the challenge from. Lauren was on that. Like they FaceTimed her and they featured her as like a five minute segment about how her boyfriend was actually there. And it probably wasn't even her boyfriend. Like how old is she? What's her accent? Does she have a boyfriend? Like what's her deal? So if anything, I'm excited to see her just come and give the unknown. Cause I know nothing authentic about this girl. Except for I, her. Lips. I, I, I just, I thought she was Nicole from for, for the worlds too. A, a bunch of times looking at the photos like oh yeah but mm. uh very much like kombucha girl that i was like mm, mm, mm. okay i don't again don't know enough about her um given what was just stated don't care to know any more than that uh i don't think she's going to last long i definitely think that uh she's she's very beautiful i will give her that I think that of her, like Bettina, Berna, all all these like smoking hot rookies, if Corey Wharton was single, this man, or if, or if Tony was single, they would just there'd be so many new challenge kids because 
She, she's not a right blonde though. Not a blonde though. Very key to note. Tony, Tony's a blonde guy. He'll he'll Corey, take Corey, not picky. Oh no, I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Just, just <laughs> excited to see what she brings. I guess. Yeah, I'm and like moderately excited. I said that as a formality. I really don't care. Like she could be <laughs> first boot, and I'd be like, okay, well, there you go. And in 17th uh, from Love Island, Germany, she actually won her season of Love Island, Germany. It's Tracy Candela. Another 64 out of 100. Uh, doing my research, fans of the show thought she was boring. Uh, she was a law student who dropped out of law school to go on Love Island and now has moved to Los Angeles to become an actor slash model. Uh, I think her agent signed her up for this show for very cheap. I do not think she knows what she's getting into. She's not like, particularly athletic. Uh, yeah, I... I don't think it's going to work out well for our girl, Tracy. Uh, <laughs> she has a similar, well, I shouldn't say. She has a similar, I'll say, body type to maybe Jin Lee, just maybe too skinny for this show. Uh, and if she's been boring on her show that she won, like she probably just skated. This is a physical show, though, not a dating show. She could probably be first boot or injured in the first daily because someone snapped her in half. Oh, I got that got increasingly violent. Uh, escalated very quickly for me. Uh, again, boring. Uh, I just remember her as the bird shirt one. Uh, the mob wife. I don't know. Not for me. Especially if fans were like, she's boring. What is she What is she going to bring then? Well, you got to have someone be the first boo to make sure that the other people who they paid the big appearance checks to, like, you know, you're paying Nani $70,000 shit to show up. You got to make sure that investment stays in the game as long as possible. I think uh, she's not, Tracy's not even being paid. No, no, no. Like, I'm, oh, I'm you're going to go on MTV. No, no exactly, yeah. Tracy's not getting paid anything. I mean, Tr- Tracy, that's exactly like, you, you You need Tracy to go out first because you, you need to make sure that Nani stays in. Um, and that's our female cast for this season. Uh, we went longer than expected, but we had a lot of fun here. Uh, our first episode of... Uh, <laughs> The Spies, Lies, and Allies episode one podcast will be up next Wednesday night, if not Thursday. Uh, I'm excited. Season starts next Wednesday, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it'll be up Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, we will be here with you every week. We will love you. We will care for you. We'll talk about this show. <laughs> I look forward to it. It should be good. I, like, I have such good feelings about this season. So fingers crossed. Yeah. It's the it's spies, lies, and Allens. That's all I keep hearing. <laughs> and I didn't want to say it at the start because I was like, then everyone's gonna say that. I gotta say, yeah, the trailer was so good. The trailer it's that they put out so screen. good. Oh. And oh. I I wrote forty eight hundred words on it, and you go to my blog. I'm I'm putting in the link here because I wrote a lot of words on it. I was up till three forty five a.m. writing it. And I was mis I was miserable. And I woke up at six thirty today, and uh, yeah, to edit it. And so, yeah, I'm I'm tired, and I and I just I'm, I'm, I'm this is this if people are still listening at this point, I appreciate them because we're seventy eight minutes deep. Uh, well, and uh, yeah, let's just we, tell them where to find us. Yeah, yeah, find us, subscribe to us on Spotify, uh, Caffeine Confessionals. YouTube caffeine confessionals. Uh, Luke on Twitter at at Final Reckoning or something. Uh, <laughs> Nikki at the Nikki Sin. Is it the Nikki Sin, right? Always the Nikki Sin. Yeah, yeah. And Alan at the Alan Uh We have an Instagram now, right? I I, I think we I do. saw it. Uh, it yeah. is Caffeine Confessionals podcast. Yeah. Make sure you check it of, out. Uh, yeah, follow it. Uh, and yeah, have a great day.